So I'm going to be talking about uh, sort of education analytics uh, in the Wolfram language, but I'm, I'm also going to be talking about data set and so on. So uh, let's see here. So first, okay, so first, just sort of a quick introduction to those not really familiar with, with data set. Um, so for those who don't know, data set is basically just a, a, a nice way of representing like nested structures of, of lists and associations um, primarily. So if I have, so for example, uh, given this, this structure of lists and associations here, I can say data set of that, and it will make me this nice data set. So what are, what, what are the advantages of, of, of using a data set? So first of all, when you, when you query a data set, um, you can do many of the sort of similar things you can do with part. So if I have this list L, right, and uh, I, I can say something part, uh, say two comma you know a, and that will get me the eighth index of the second, uh, or the eighth key of the second indexed thing in L. So I can do the same thing with this data set. So if I have this data set D, I can say that of two comma a, and that that'll do the same thing. So um, so you can see you sort of have this same structure where you where you basically specify what you want from each level as you as you go down. Um, but now, the cool thing about data set is that it lets you also apply functions and so on. Um, so it lets you apply functions at, at, at weird levels inside of, these, inside of these structures. So for example, if I said something like D of 2, right, that's just going to be this, this second, uh, second row here. Um, but I could say something like D of 2 comma F. And you can see that applies F to that second row. Uh, I could also maybe say something like D of, D of F comma uh, 2 which will apply f to, let me see, what is that doing? Or, or sorry, d of f comma, comma a, which will apply f to all of the eighth indices. Um, so that's pretty useful. Um, in this case, though, we could still do this fairly easily with a list. We could say something like l uh, part you know, all comma a, and then maybe just say f of that. But even still, this is slightly nicer. And we're going to get to cases where, where to use part would be just vastly less efficient in terms of both speed and code. Oh, oh, the scale. Yes, yes, yes. Let me see. Is, is that better for a bit bigger? Is that good? OK, that's good. Great. OK, so, um, so let's see. So that's just sort of the, um, or OK, actually, one, one other quick thing about, about data set here. So if we look at um, uh, the other thing is that, let, let's say we want to apply you know, multiple functions at a certain level. So for example, if I go back to that example where I had uh, D of f comma a, let's say I also want to apply you know, g, some other function that does something else. Um, sort of you, you do the, the logical thing, which is that you can use uh, a composition. So I can run something like this, um, which, OK, so for those who don't know, because this is a somewhat new infix, I think this is version 10, this is the infix for right composition. So basically, um, let's see, f right composed with g of x is the same as g of f of x. So what, the, what the, the point of this is, it's exactly the same as compose, except the order is flipped. And sort of the, the logic of this is just that it, it, it reads sort of like, like English text from, from left to right. Um, so it's, when you have big strings of these things, it can often be a bit, a bit more legible. Um, but so you can, the point is that I can, you can put in a, a compose into this, and you know, it works just like you'd expect it to, except actually, um, as we'll see in a moment with uh, data set, it doesn't really treat this as a single composed function. Um, you can actually deal with it. Um, so, so for example, let's say I, I have a, a data set. So let's say we go back to that example where I said 2 comma a. I can actually write something like that. Okay, and what that's doing is it see it's, it's getting 2a and then it's applying f. So, so basically it's getting the, the eighth index of the second element and then it's applying f at sort of the first level. So now you'll notice, though, that this here is not really a function. I'm composing the number 2 with uh, some function f or some symbol f. So that doesn't inherently really make much sense. So the point is that data set treats this, these compositions less as actual functions, less as actual compositions, and more as um, sort of uh, a series of things which it should apply in some way. So you can, you can also think about it as, for example, you can say this, this 2, this index, is more of just a function that will you could think of it more as representing a function that will get, say, the second index. Um, but all right, so let's, let's move on to some more sort of interesting cases. So I'm going to be, basically what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be 
playing around with this, this education data and trying to show some sort of, uh, basically try and show some of the, the more interesting uses of data set um, with this as sort of the, the data on which to, to use it. So um, let me see. So if I run this here, this should get me my, my anonymized data. So let's, let, let's try something very simple. So, so okay, one of the data sets I have, I have a bunch of the data sets here. So I can, I can look at, for example, this, this is the main one. I have one called classes. And so classes is just a data set with, um, it's basically just a list of associations. And each of these associations represents a single class. So these are, so I should, I should give a bit of background first, not, not too much, but basically this, um, this data comes from a, uh, comes from a, uh, uh, recordings of an online school. So these are, uh, there, there, for example, there's some things that you might not expect from a, a normal school. So for example, if I look at the 16th class, we can maybe get a better look. So for example, we have stuff like messages because there's a, there's actually a text chat so people can, can write things uh, during the class. So that you wouldn't probably, you probably wouldn't have it in a normal school, but it's, it's, you know, useful for analysis and so on because it's all, of course, all the information is textual and so on. So, but the, I guess what I'm saying is that um, some aspects of this are, are sort of a bit more systematized or a bit different from a normal school, of course. Um, but okay, so, so we can look at, for example, this is the 16th class. So if we want to say, just look at all the messages in the 16th class, we could just say 16 comma, you know, messages. And so we can see then this is the, the data set of, of all the messages in the 16th uh, class. Um, I'll probably get to why these, some of these times are negative in a minute if it's, if it's bugging anybody. But um, so, uh, Let's, let's try doing something simple here. So we can try, um, we can try let, let, let's, say, um, let's say we want to look at you know, who's, who's talking the most in this class. We want to see, so these are all fake names, by the way. These are all, the names are consistent, but um, they're not the actual names. They're, they're random names. They, they could coincidentally be the actual name of the person, but they're probably not. Um, so let's see, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, so we can, we can take a look at, at uh, sort of which Know, which people write more messages or more words or, or whatever. So let's let's start with just, you know, maybe uh, who writes the most messages. That that could be a question we could ask. So we could we could say something messages comma all comma name, right? And so that should just get us all the names for all the messages. So there we go. So there there's just a bunch of names there. And then of course we could also just we could say uh, there's a function counts um, for those who don't know. It's I think it's a version 10 function. So um, but so basically what this would do is it. It'll tally up all of the, the uses of, you know, say, Hannah and then William and so on. So we can see how many messages each of these people sent. So that's sort of interesting. So we can see you know, how many messages these people sent. And we can also try doing something like maybe we could, we could make this into a histogram. So you can see, I mean, when, when I apply this histogram here, the point is that, or actually I could, I could apply it here as well. The point is that I want to, I'm basically applying this function uh, at the, basically at the, at the second level of the structure. Um, and so if I run that, you can see, okay, we didn't have that many messages, so this isn't terribly interesting. Um, so now, um, but, but there is definitely a, you know, an obvious trend, or I guess from your perspective, it goes like this. Um, so let's, let's try, maybe we can try and, and get something with a bit, a bit high resolution here. So I have a, another data set called messages, which is all the messages. So you can see this says it has 43,000 rows. So we could try saying something like this of all, comma, name. Um, and then we could say something like counts, and then make a histogram from that. Okay, and that, that's maybe a bit, a bit more interesting. Um, but all right, let's let's maybe move on a bit here. So I guess the the, the point is though, is with something like this, um, you're basically you're applying you know, the function histogram at the second level. So it's uh, and, and it'll do that after it gets the the messages. Um, now, the, the other thing about data set, um, which can be sort of weird sometimes, although it's, it's sort of necessary um, for something like data set, is that it doesn't always run things in exactly the order you think it will. Um, and by that, I don't mean that it's, it's, it's like non-deterministic, but, uh, but it, it, it sort of has heuristics for, for figuring out, heuristics that you can you know, understand, they're not terribly complicated, for figuring out um, what order to run things in. So, uh, for example, let's see. Um, if I if I have a data set like this one here, um, let's say I want to get. Um, well, let's do this. So let's say I want to first I want to select all of the ones, all of the rows 
where the where the a value uh, in that row is odd. Okay, so I could say selective hash a, uh, selective odd q of hash a, right? Okay, and then there are all the rows where a is odd. And then let's say for each of those rows, I want to get b. Oh, whoops. There we are. But now there's something interesting about this, which is that if we look at just if we just say d of all comma b. You can see there's, there's no information about the A's. So how would we possibly select all the A's? So then you'd say, OK, well, then it's running the select first, and then it's, and then it's getting the B's. And that is what it's doing. But then if I did something like D of all comma B, but then maybe instead of all we wrote, let's see, what, what would be a function we could do here? We could say something like, um, I think odd Q, well, that. Right, so that, 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 was, that was listable over the whole thing, although I think I did it. Slightly wrong element with head list. OK, well, so um, basically, the, the point is that this, you can see it ran after it got all the Bs. So there, there's sort of a, the order in which it runs things depends on what the function is. And again, it is, it is there are rules for this, and they're not terribly complicated. But, um, and, and without it, you run into all sorts of horrible problems. Because for example, with this odd queue here, if, for example, if I said counts, right, counts is a bit less interesting because there's only one of each. But the point is, you can see the counts is run after it gets the B, um, or after it gets all the Bs, as opposed to before, like when it ran the select. Um, and again, to have, it, to have it run them in the same order would mean that one of these situations wouldn't work, or you'd have to contort a bit to make it work. Um, so it is useful that it, it runs in orders like this. Um, but all right, so let's, let's I guess, uh, continue on to some, some more complicated stuff. So these are sort of the, the very basics of, of, of data sets. So we can try. We can try maybe looking at something, um, something maybe a bit more, a bit more interesting about this data. So let's let's look back at this this classes here. Um, so let's try let's try this. Let's see if. Um, well, okay. So we can try seeing like maybe the what is the the distribution of of the messages, say the messages per minute in these different classes. So what what you know do. Do most of these classes have um, you know, similar messages per minute, or some much more talkative in that respect, or some much less talkative, and so on? So, so we can start just with this class here, so with 16. So we'd say 16, comma, and then we could say messages. And then if we just want to get the number of messages, we could just say slash star, or write compose length. OK, and so then there's, there's the number of messages in that class. Um, but now I also want to have, so then I want to basically divide this by the duration of the class. So how, how might I do that? So um, one way I could do this um, is I could write something like this. So I could give it a function here. I could give it a, a pure function. And the pure function could just be something like uh, hash messages or length of, of has, half, half, excuse me, length of hash messages, which is the same as what we just wrote down here, um, and maybe divided by uh, hash full duration, which is the duration of the class, basically. And that'll get us a, re a reasonable result. And I could say something like all there, and there, there they are for all the classes. And I could say something like histogram, and then there's the distribution of the, of the, the messages per, per minute in all the classes. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Now the other way of doing it, which might uh, in this instance seem maybe not as, not as beautiful, um, is, is, is like this, although I, I promise you that in other cases it is significantly more beautiful, and I'll, I'll get to that. Um, so we could also, if I have a data set, like um, let me go back to my, my very simple data set here. So if I have my data set D, um, and I say D of, say, 2, uh, and then comma, and then I give it two functions in a list, it'll apply each of those functions to the whole thing and return it in a list. So you can see it's, it's applying. It's applying f to this thing, and then it's applying g to this thing. And the, and the point is, this is consistent with the way that part works and the way that you can ask for multiple parts in that with part or you know, with a data set. You can ask for, say, 2, and then ask for both a. You can do something like this, or b. Right, so this, these two are consistent in the sense that if we think about indices and keys as basically being functions that get an index or get a key, then, um, then it makes sense that we can also give functions here, and that it will apply each of them to the to sort of the full, the full data that we're that we're looking at. Um, so, um, what we can do uh, in this case 
is we don't just want the messages, um, the, the number of messages, we also want to know the, the duration. So I can say something like, like this. So we can ask for the messages, and then we can also ask for full duration. And so then that should return them both in a list. And so then we can do something, um, just because this whole list here, this is just sort of one, one sort of query in itself, a sort of a self-contained thing. So just like with these other functions and these other indices where we can compose stuff onto them, we can also compose something onto the end of this. So I could then compose something like, um, well, we could just say like hash part one divided by hash part two. Um, and there we go. And so then I could say all there and then histogram there. And you can see these do the same thing. We could also, if we wanted to, maybe this is a bit cleaner. Instead of saying this, this is the same as saying apply of, of hash one divided by hash two, which is, in fact, the same as just saying apply of divide. So we could also write it like that, and that works as well, just because all those functions are exactly equivalent, or basically exactly equivalent, as long as you put the right things in. Um, so now, one of the cool things also about data set is that a lot of these queries, you can sort of, uh, as long as the, the structure that they're applying to is, is the same, you can move them around in, in interesting ways. So for example, right now I've been playing around with this, this data set classes, right, which is just a list of, of all these classes. But I also have um, a data set called courses. And what courses is, is just classes, but organized by, by um, the course, because I have data from four different courses here. So what we could do, we, we've built up this query, right, that sort of, that given, you know, given the, all these classes, it will make this distribution of the messages per, per minute. Um, so all I really need to do is I can actually just say courses of, say, one comma this. And so this will apply that to just the first course. Um, and then the neat thing is I can also say all comma that. And then, there's just, and then there are the distributions for all of the courses. So I guess it's, it's neat in that you can, you can sort of build up these queries and so on and apply them very broadly. Um, and you can move them around. And, and that way you can sort of, as long as you have consistent data structures, um, you can use queries in sort of somewhat creative ways. Um, so let's see. Um, let's, let's maybe get to a slightly more complicated one here, because I think I'm, I'm sort of running a bit out of time. Not quite, but getting there. So let's see. So let's say that we want to, to look at, so let's say we want to look at this. So given, given classes, right, we have, we have microphone data as well. So, so people have to press a button, and they come on microphone, and then they can talk, and they can press a button, and they come off microphone. So if I say um, you know, 16 comma microphone, we can see what that data looks like. Okay, so we can see that it has a name, and then it has you know, the duration that they were on microphone, and so on. So let's, let's do this. Let's see maybe what, what um, let's see maybe what the, um, uh, the how, 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 how talkative people are on microphone versus how, or how talkative a class is on microphone versus how talkative they are in text chat. So the basic question is, um, if, if in a class people are talking a lot on microphone, as in a large fraction of the time somebody's on microphone, does that also mean that people are talking a lot in text chat? Or does it mean that people aren't talking that much in text chat because they're in fact talking on, on microphone? Or, or, or what does that mean? So, so we, can, we, can, we can look at this. So for example, um, let, let, let's first just write something to get uh, the, the duration of time that somebody talked on microphone in a class. So OK, right here, we just have all the microphone um, record or all the, the instances of somebody coming up a microphone in a class. So I can just take this, and then we can say all comma duration, right? And we're just going to get everything in this column here. And there we are. Um, it's down here. Um, and then I could maybe replace this with total. And then there we go. There's just the total duration of how long people are talking on microphone for that whole class. Um, so you know, 35.594 minutes. Um, now we also, similarly to before, we want to divide this by the full duration of the class. So I say similarly to before in that we were, we were sort of getting this and then getting some property and then getting the duration and dividing them. So let's see. So now to do this, though, what we basically want to do, let, let, let's take this second approach here, because this is where the second approach really becomes much cleaner. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get both this property and we also want to get the, the full duration, or, or actually in this case, um, we actually want to get this, this other property, which is the recording duration. And there's, there's sort of a subtle difference, which I don't want to get into right here. Um, but now there's sort of a, a problem here, because you can see that this, 
it might just try and apply microphone and total and duration separately, and, and there's no, nothing really grouping them together to say that these three are, are one kind of query and that this is another query. Um, so what we can actually do is we can use a function called query, which will sort of group those all together. Now, the thing about query, this is also very consistent because query um, is basically, uh, it's, it's sort of like the data set function in the sense that if I have a list like this, and let's say we, we or let, let's say we took our took our data sets. So remember, this data set and, and L are both they both represent the same data. One is just a list of associations, and the other is a data set. Um, so uh, what we can do is let's let's do something with with our data set that maybe we couldn't do with our list. Okay, actually, this example right here that we wrote earlier. This is something that we cannot do with just part um, with our list. It won't work. In fact, I can I can try it. Uh, L of two comma f comma g it will give me an error. It says that the expression f and g, there's not indices or keys. There's, there's nothing I can do with it. Um, so let's see. Um, so what we can do, basically query, if I, if I take, whoops. Oh, no. <laughs> I appear to have broken it. OK, let's see if I can, OK, let's see if we can get everything back. Oh, OK, I can, we can, we can continue with this, though. Let's see. I can try and I can try and we didn't have too much that was that we were sort of depending on there, so we can probably sort of get back a bit. But um, all right, so we can try. Let's 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 see. So we were, what we just had, and I don't. Okay, I won't forget. I won't forget this time. Let's see. Okay, so we I can try and get back to. Uh, let's see. We had a uh, we had for a class we had um, the total time on microphone. So class the microphone. And then uh, all the duration. And so we can then say that. And so what we just wrote is I had that in list, and I wanted to, to divide that by recording duration. Um, so basically, the, the, what I was just saying a moment ago. So um, L part, so this doesn't work, right? But then this, this does work. So how might we try and do this to a list? If, if it's not a data set, if it's just a list, how might we apply this? And the answer is use query. So if I say query of 2 fg like that, this doesn't really do anything by itself. But this is it's sort of query is only in operator form. So basically, I can apply this to L. And it would do the same thing that it would do to L if it were a data set, um, or if, if we queried this in a data set. So really, in doing this, it's actually very consistent, because it's applying this as a function. Um, just like um, it might apply some other function. And, um, and you can see that query is just a function. It's not some magical wrapper thing. It's actually just a function that will you know, query this thing in a similar way to data set. So if I run this, there we are. So then there, here's the total time on microphone um, and the recording duration. So then I can do what we did above, where we said apply of divide, and we can see the ratio there. OK, so this is the fraction of time that people um, are talking during the class. So if I say, say all there, we can see it. Hopefully, there we go. There's for all the classes. And so I can maybe say histogram instead of all to try and see the, the distribution of, of what fraction of the time. OK, there we go. So that, that isn't terribly interesting, because it seems that it's, it's, it's close to 1 in the sense that people are talking pretty much all the time. Um, so now, I guess what we can say is, well, one, one guess I might have is that, in fact, uh, it's basically teachers talking a good chunk of the time. So what we might want to do is we might want to try and remove all the teachers from this data because we don't care, you know, if a teacher is talking is rambling on for you know 30 minutes or something, uh, we don't want to really include that in in this year because at least in this particular visualization we might only be worrying about how talkative students are um, because it's sort of a given that you know somebody will be talking on a microphone at least most of the time. So um, let me see. I think I sort of have to wrap up here, but we can very quickly look at, I guess, one of the one of the the sort of final. The final um, features of, of data set, which is there's, um, let's say I want to take, say, the 16th class, and let's say I want to, or, and then say, let's just take the, you know, the microphone. So I have this list here, teachers, and this is the list, these are the anonymized names of all the teachers. Um, so you can see this teacher, Sophia, is presumably the one teaching this class, and you can see that she 
she appears a number of times and, and talks a fair amount. So we want to, we don't care about when, when Sophia talks, we don't want to count that. And you can see she also talks for a fair amount of time when she does. So we want to delete all those. So what I can say is I can, right after this microphone, I can just say something like select of, um, and then let's see, we could just write something like uh, free queue of uh, teachers, comma, name. So basically what this is going to do is going to say, OK, for each of these things, select the ones where the name attribute is not inside of teachers, right? Or the, the, the name key. So th there we go. So now we can see that got rid of all the teachers. So OK, great. But now we want to apply this to all of, or we want to apply this to more than just microphone. We want to apply this to a few different things. We want to apply this to, let me just get a single class here, to messages and camera and statuses and microphone and so on. But we don't want to apply it to things like full duration or course. So you could probably write some, some horrendous pure function that, that does this. But in fact, there's a, there's a, a nicer way with, with data set. And that is you can actually have a list like this, um, just a list of rules where you say, uh, say messages, arrow, and then you can give it a function. And it will apply this function only to messages. And it will leave everything else alone. So this is kind of neat. And so now I, could, I can sort of selectively. Now, I think, I think what's going wrong here is I'm pressing some keystroke, which is, which is breaking it. I don't think it's actually something I'm running. But I guess this is sort of fate, because it's, it's about to be 3. So 